Boss Lady Conversations with Monica L. And Coach Kaya. Boss ladies are vulnerable, authentic, love, hopeful, abundant, respected. Boss ladies are you. you. Welcome back, family. Thank you for joining us for another Boss Lady Conversation. And yes, this is still season two. I'm your girl, Coach Kaya. I'm a boss wife, mompreneur, sister, writer, and certified transformational coach. I help people access their power, heal the trauma of their past, and reignite their dreams, all for the purposes of manifesting the miracles that truly matter today. My IG handle is at I am Coach Kaya. Yes, and I am Monica L., a boss lady. Cleveland born, LA raised on a journey of freedom and happiness as an educator, entrepreneur, self-published author and poet. I believe all things are possible through synergy. Let's get it. My IG handle is at Monica L underscore writer. Woo, boss ladies. <laughs> this is a movement with you in mind. So please keep in touch, like our episodes, subscribe to our channel, follow us on IG. And email us at bossladyconversations at gmail.com. Yes, our mission is to give you a brave space to learn, grow, and contribute so that you feel bossed up to go after what matters most in your life. And today we're going to bring you our very first review. We are reviewing The Best Man, the final chapters, which is a drama, eight episode series streaming on Peacock. The first Best Man film came out in 1999. Can you believe it? No, that's crazy. 1999, Lord. (laughs) And the second film, The Best Man Holiday, came out in 2013. Wow. So let's get into it. So we're going to catch you up on who's who, what, when, where, and why this Peacock summary is so necessary. So based on the Best Man Universal franchise film written and directed by Malcolm D. Lee, the series catches up with Harper, Robin, Jordan, Lance, Quentin, Shelby, Candace, and Merch as their relationship revolves and past grievances resurface and their unpredictable stages of midlife crises meet midlife renaissance. Yes, and co-developed by writer, EP, director, co-showrunner Malcolm D. Lee. Co-developed also by writer, EP, co-showrunner Dana Lynn North. And the executive producers are Dominique Telson and Sean Daniel. And of course, we know it was directed by Malcolm D. Lee, Charles Stone III, Robert Townsend, and Stacey Muhammad. We definitely want to shout out those people behind the scenes. What people don't realize is that Films, television shows, sometimes they take people years to develop. They're constantly working on ideas, trying to get that green light. And it is a whole other side process of how you actually get a film or a television show made. So we definitely want to shout them out. They've done so much for the culture. And that's my first question, Monica L. What do you think the best man films and the series, the final chapters, mean for the culture? Oh, Coach Kaya, first of all, thank you for recognizing we're talking about pioneers who have given decades of their lives. When we talk about 1999 and we're talking about 2023, like really honoring them. So thank you for giving them their flowers because it's so deserved. It means a lot to me personally, (laughs) but I also feel like it means a lot to the culture because it, it shows the many layers and the facets of being African-American, that we're not all the same, that we all have different backgrounds. It gives more of a depth to me with the characters because we got to see them grow and their relationships personally, professionally. So it meant a lot to me because a lot of times things end and it just ends. And then as a fan, you're like guessing like, Okay, I wonder where the character at now. What is happening? (laughs) And you just got to like, oh, it just ended. And each of the series have had a very profound ending, which makes us want more and more. So I am very pleased at this body of work. And I feel honored to even be doing this review today with you. 
Oh, I feel the same way, sister. I mean, this was such a cast. They really nailed the energy of what it is to have a friendship, right? To be in college with these people, to really go through your pivotal years with these people and have this bond and then try to translate that into like the real world. And I think it was the first time we've seen this type of energy on the big screen with people of color. So it means so much to the culture. I feel like not one person outshine the other. I feel like they are a true ensemble cast. You need everybody. You want to see everybody. So having this opportunity to catch up with them was just phenomenal. It felt so exciting to me. I just remember every episode just being excited and like happy to be there. Oh, I feel the same way, Coach Kaya. And with that, what character do you feel had the most layers or the most growth since the last time we mm -hmm. saw them nine years ago and the best man holiday. Nine years ago. And, and I just remember the best man holiday being so emotional. It's still hard for me to actually watch that film. Yeah. If it happens to come on, I'll watch it, but it is a little bit hard to watch because it's so emotional. So I was really happy to see the characters, some of the characters who really evolved. And so I would say Candace and Merch and Shelby and Quentin. I feel like the last time we saw Candace and Merch, they were like trying to figure it out, right? Making their segue into education, like really trying to build. But when we see them now, it's like they've already built that foundation. But now they're trying to also find out now what? How do we make sure that we're raising children that can survive in this world? And, you know, that's personal, you know, for me, that's a heavy topic. How do you still make time for each other? And being married, right? Because your children they're heading out of that nest, right? If all goes well, <laughs> they're heading out of that nest. And so they really touched upon like making the sacrifices for their children and also trying to find some time for themselves as individuals and also trying to make sure that their family is secure and that they're not, they're not like fighting in front of their kids, traumatized. Like they talked about so many issues and I could really see them as adults, right? As adults with real problems, and also they maintain that love for each other, trying to find it again, trying to make time for each other. And I also felt like Shelby and Quentin also evolved because, you know, they were both just a mess. <laughs> a yes. mess. Like you were not expecting them to evolve. OK, they just no. like that's they are who they are and you just deal with it. Yeah. But we got to really dive a lot deeper into their hearts and get to know them on a very intimate level. Yes, yes, yes. I totally agree with everything you said, 110%. Candace and Merch, they really tackle a number of complex issues, including parenting and so many other things that we'll talk more about. But you're right. And, and Shelby and Quentin, like, like we knew they would be together, but not together like this, like officially together, <laughs> married together. No, I didn't see that coming. And that was <laughs> not the premise of the wedding. It was not meant for them, but yeah, <laughs> but it was there. Right. Yeah. Yes. Totally agree, sis. Yes. <laughs> Which couple do you feel had the best chemistry and who do you feel had like not so great chemistry? Like it was not really believable. Oh gosh. Okay. Don't nobody come for me. <laughs> This is just my opinion. You know, the best chemistry, I want to say, I want to go back to Quentin and Shelby. And I think that theirs, because their story, in my opinion, really unfolded in this uh, series where we got to see the depth of their love for each other. We got to see that they actually have a child together. That's a teenager now. We got to see that they really knew each other as well. Like they know the person and not mm. the representative that they presented to the world. Like they mm. really knew each other. And for that, you get to see the level of love that they have mm. for each other. And as they had to deal with a lot of life issues with him supporting his dad and the things his father's was dealing with and then his own health. So I really bonded with them because I felt like we got to see the whole facet of them. Mm -hmm. And it was on a, a deep level, not, oh, I have this, I have that and you have this, but 
really got mm-hmm. to see them come together as a couple that we really, as you said, we didn't see before. Now the couple, yeah. no, we did not see that. We just saw they they loved each other. It was lust. I th- I feel like we saw from lust to love. There we go. Oh, there it <laughs> <Yeah>. is. <laughs> there That's it is. Perfect. Yes, yes, because they definitely had lust. <laughs> but the love part, <laughs> we was like, oh, I don't know. But Harper and Robin, uh, they was just not giving. I I felt like the ending was predictable <laughs> in that aspect because it just either they grew apart or they were never really meant to totally be together for a lifetime. Maybe they served a purpose during certain periods and they needed each other, but it's clear that they were going in different directions. And that was from the opening scene where she wanted to be off exploring the different (laughs) spices on the island while everyone else is like sunbathing (laughs) and stuff um, and enjoying excursions. It was just a disconnect. Her jumping off of the ship, it was more than just that. Like it was really symbolic of I am departing. I am (laughs) I am away from y'all. No, you caught that. You caught that because you said that from the very beginning, like after you had seen two episodes you were like "Mm, I don't think they're gonna make it I was like really that's the direction we're going yeah because she was always over here and I feel like she's been to the left a lot in the series because she was not a part of uh, the co-ed experience but now she had what she needed to stand firm do Mm -hmm. what she felt she needed to do with her life so I would say lack of chemistry that would definitely be that couple so coach kaya now i have another question for you (laughs) so do you feel that the series left any unanswered questions yes i would say that the character that really reflects what i feel about the unanswered questions would be jordan right like she's a main character like you said she's a part of the inner circle she you could see what she has held down her her beloved best friend who passed away, right? You could tell that she definitely tried to be there for Lance more, tried to be there for his children more, definitely extended herself in a way like where she could balance work and family. But there are so many unanswered questions about her. Number one, why couldn't she see? And then once they discovered that she wasn't pregnant, like they never talked about her health concerns. As a Black woman, like I want to know about the health concerns. Like I want to follow up, making sure that we're taking care of ourselves, that we're going to the doctor, that we're getting some closure. I don't feel we got any closure about that part, which was a little scary. (laughs) And then also about her relationship with Harper. Does she end up with Harper? Does she just choose herself and decide to be just, Dolo, what happens to her, right? It was very unclear. Like I remember there was one scene toward the end where she was just wearing white and smiling really hard. Jordan, are you trying to give us a message? Like, what's the message? (laughs) You know, like, what does that mean? She looked happy, which is a great thing, but it would have been nice for her to see her get another part of her dreams fulfilled, whatever that would have been, right? Even if that was motherhood, because she definitely seemed like that was something that she wanted. But Everybody doesn't become a mother. So I also get that too, right? It's not for everybody. It doesn't always work out the same, but it would have been nice just to get some more closure from her. So we didn't get that. But overall, I feel like they definitely did the best they could in the time allotted. I felt like they used every moment they had to give us a message, to give us something, right? The effort was definitely there. And I just would love to see more. Well said. I I totally agree. We love Jordan and it felt like she was there. Like she said, like you said, she supported Lance and her godchildren. She supported everybody. She was a boss woman yeah. <laughs> who, who was running companies and and then, you know, it felt like, you know, the health scare was some other stuff at work and she decided to do consulting work. She looked happy. She looked amazing. But again, it was the unanswered questions. Um, I also liked how they, you know, touched upon her relationship for two seconds, you know, (laughs) and then they definitely had a difference of beliefs. And she made it very clear that 
you rock that way, you not rocking with me. And I, you know, I appreciated that. Um, she stood for what she believed in. Um, mm -hmm. And it seemed like he wanted to be present and a part of her life in a meaningful way. <laughs> yes, he did. I mean, she was just mad at him the whole time. She was mad at him from the past. She was mad at him from the future. She was mad at him for who he was today. Like it was, it was a lot of um anger there. Yeah, so we can see why that. But also, <laughs> I feel like you know there's the the elephant in the room too. But anyway, we'll move on. Yes. <laughs> Yes. This yes. is so juicy. There was so much there. It was. Yes. It was. Oh my gosh. So Monica, was there anything that you didn't love about the series or something that you would change? Oh, I, it's really hard to say, but I want to say I loved everything because I was just so happy to binge watch, to reflect, to remember why we love them so much. And they really became their character. This should not be the last because I feel mm -hmm. like we have unanswered questions, but final chapters, is that really? The <laughs> they did say <laughs> the final chapter. chapters. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like they definitely address a lot of current issues and they did it in a very um, high level but you know, relatable way. Um, I I wouldn't change anything because you know, as we're all artists, we know how people feel about their work. So I mm -hmm. wouldn't have changed anything. The only thing I would say is the same thing you said about Jordan, just wanting to know more about like what really happened. Um, are we just supposed to assume she was working hard? So don't work hard and have your own. Are we promoting entrepreneurship? I think that those things hit home. But also I, I really loved how they showed the different types of relationships. Yes. You know, they really showed that. They showed no one can deny the love that Harper and Jordan has. And that has been consistent throughout. <laughs> yeah. So it's very interesting. Like you said, she's sitting there. She's happy at the end. She's smiling for him. He's winning his award. He's very supportive. So I, I just would want like real closure on what is going to happen with that relationship. Because I feel like that relationship is the one that has been pivotal. And so like, let's really see how it ends. Yeah, All right. That's what I would say. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that because it's like, she's always going to be like the girl who got away, but then he didn't choose her. And so that brings up a very pivotal topic because that happens a lot. You know, you have someone that you have this connection with, but you make a different choice. Maybe they didn't want to push the narrative. Like you could go back in time and happily ever after, because sometimes in real life, like that's really not the case. Like that ship has sailed. It's a no, right? But in this case, it did seem that they both would be open to that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. brings yeah. up a great point. And the next question. So <laughs> it says final chapter, Coach Kaya. But do you really think it's over? And or will we see these characters again? In my heart, I don't want it to be over. Like you said, I want to go and binge watch it again and just like you know eat some popcorn and have a nice beautiful time revisiting these characters and these stories but it does say the final chapter so what I'm really hoping for is that we get to see these actors continue to to live their best lives and do the work that they love so much mm -hmm. I really hope that this puts the spotlight on them um the directors Malcolm D. Lee that that they're able to just expand their careers and be celebrated and welcomed into more opportunities like this, you know, to, yes. to show these beautiful people on screen, to tell stories that matter. And that's my hope for it. So in that regard, I don't want it to be the final anything. Like I hope that this represents a brand new beginning for them. And we're, we're going to be watching because people, people really love them. Like for real. They do. And more importantly, yeah. we have to figure out what's happening with Lance and Jasmine. Like Jasmine is new <laughs> to the class. We love Jasmine because she's the only one who literally gave 
Lance, a run for the money, literally and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. she saw all his antics and she was like, that's you over there. But over here, <laughs> over you here? like a lady. Yeah. So we need to know there's, there's a couple of couples that we just need to know what's mm. happening, but no, you're absolutely right. I would love to see each and every one of them. And I really feel like this could be a series. Why not? Because there's so many topics. They have children, they have businesses. Let's talk about the ownership, like having a hotel chain. Come on now. Like, come on let's now. Talk about it. Let's talk about generational wealth and leaving legacy. Yeah. Like, they're really talking about, you know, the importance of education and non traditional medicine and. Let's really talk about higher ed and all the things and the complexities that come with that. Mm. So yeah, they I, I feel like we can we definitely need it. It is like you say, multi-layer and it gives something for everyone. So I love, love, love it. Yes. I love that you talked about the educational aspect. I definitely learned a lot, <laughs> a lot by by watching this. Some some major takeaways, things that I just hadn't thought about topics that you know I had not explored and they really did educate and I think you know that's that's a powerful film television is a powerful tool for education yes right yes and then you had also mentioned earlier about the sisterhood and then the bond that the men had with each other and like how they could be there for each other like that's how you really know when you have a friendship when people could will just sit with you in your darkest hour yes and the, and they showed that they showed them holding space for each other in a way that they could receive the support yeah and people don't get to see that you know especially when it comes to black men right it's always like ha 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 jokes 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 but that barbershop vibe, right? That sacred space that they created around the table for each other. That's beautiful. I want to see more of that. I, I do too. And like you said, this is like, we're, we're just thinking about everything that we've seen that has been so amazing. Like they really challenge our current, you know, medicine and our healthcare. Mm -hmm. They really challenge like to think outside, you know, with the shaman, like a many different aspects, but you're right. It's, it's the bond. It's the bond. It's like, we have the men who bonded over, you know, the card game at night and yeah. talking mess, <laughs> but really having that, knowing that they're there for each other. Certain yeah. things don't even have to be said. It's just, it's just there. And it's a bond, a true bond, and like you yeah. said, for the women and then together, they really came hard <laughs> on Harper when it was about the divorce and the child, like they all like lit into him, but they still are friends. So you're right. Someone who can really support you during your darkest period, yes. but also can let you know when you, you ain't doing right. <laughs> right. You on your best. Right. And you'd be okay with that. Maybe not in the moment, but <laughs> maybe some time and you'd be like, right. I know that was meant in love, even though it didn't right. sound loving, but <laughs> <laughs> so yes, great, great, great. I give it 10 stars across the board. Yes. Me too. Yeah. It's a must watch people. It's a must watch. You will definitely walk away from, from watching it, feeling like you went to a family reunion. You love to you love. You were happy to see who you were happy to see. And some people might get on your nerves, but that's all very normal. And you need to be present for it, period. Yes. So we hope you enjoyed our review of The Best Man, the final chapters. Please, please support this amazing work. Go stream it on Peacock and let us know what you think. And as always, continue to boss up and find new ways to love your life. Yes. Yeah, see you next Boss Lady Conversations.